so for vectors, we have defined a number of operations. Sum, subtraction, uh, scalar product, dot product, vector product, and tensor product. Remember that? OK. So you should keep in mind that these are normal operations that we will find or will do along our explanations. Now let's think of second order tensor, for instance. What operations can we do in second order tensor? Well, of course, we can also sum. If I have a second order tensor A with components I, A, J, and a second order B with components B, I, J, the result is a second order tensor whose component IJ is the sum of component A and component B, the same component. Okay? So summing every component, that's easy. Scalar multiplication. If I multiply a tensor, second order tensor A, times a scalar alpha, that's the second order tensor, whose component IJ is alpha times the corresponding component of A. That's also immediately to to see. Now, <coughs> we can do dot product operations. Dot product, I recall, the dot product is indicated by a dot in between them. We define the dot, dot product operations for vectors, so first order tensors. But now what about if I have now a second order tensor A, which is indicated by a capital A in bold, times a first order tensor, a vector B, okay? So that is a first order, a vector. Why? Look, from now on, whenever we have a point here, we will replace this concept, having a point, by repeating indices. So <coughs> let's consider the components A. For instance, a component of A would be IJ. Here, it will come a component of B. What component? Well, since there is a dot here, we will understand this dot of repetition. This is a repeated index. So I place here the same component. You know, in red here, in red, we have repeated indices. And now, if I do that operation, I realize that, of course, this repeated indices implies a sum. So j is a mute index, and i is a talking index. So finally, only this component i comes to the other side. So this tells us, this tells us that c is a vector because it has only one index, so a first order tensor. And the component i is i a j times v j. This implying the sum of i, the, uh, the sum in terms of j. Look, we can extend that, for instance, to multiply. Imagine that you have a third order tensor calligraph A. And we want to do, to do the dot product times a first order tensor, that is a vector. So we do, we do the same rule. Whene whenever we see a dot, we repeat the index. So we take a generic, we place a generic component of A, typically I, A, I, J, K. And then I have to place here a generic component of B. But this is not so generic because since there is a dot here, that means that there is index repetition at this point. So I have to place KK here. So this is a mute index. IJ are talking indices. So the result would be something whose components would be IJ. So this is what? Something that has two different components is, is what? Second order tensor. So now, through that, we just find out that the dot product of a third order tensor times a first order tensor is something that reduces the order of the minimum. So instead of, instead of being a third order tensor, it's a second order tensor. Because there is a contraction of the indices. That repetition some, some, somehow is also called contraction. So the index disappears. We have here three indices. But due to contraction, due to repetition, the third index becomes mute, so the result is something that has only two indices. OK? We can also talk of multiplying the dot product of two second order tensors. 
What is the rule for this? Okay, let's place the first tensor, component IJ. Let's place the second component, B, B. But then, since there is a dot where the two indices meet, so the second of the first, the first of the second, we have to repeat. And then, of course, the resulting indices are IK, which are talking. So the resulting, the product of two second order tensor is a what? What is the order of the tensor? Second order. And the rule for constructing component IK is IAJ times BJK. Okay? Well, following the rules, we can also prove that it's not the same in general that I times V equal B times A, etc., etc. The, the, the notation A square will indicate A times A. Okay? That's a notation. Some properties with this linear operator. It's interesting to introduce here the identity tensor, the second order unit tensor. By definition, the second order unit tensor is something whose components matrix, so matrix of components, is that one, having one, one, one. In the diagonal, the first, the principal diagonal, ones, and all the remaining zeros. By the way, what is the way to simplify the indication of that? What is the component IJ of the second, the second order unit tensor? The component IJ, according to what we did before, is the delta chronicle. For I equal J, so for the components at the main diagonal, the result is one. Otherwise, when I is different from J, the results are zero. What is the property of this unit tensor? Well, the name also indicates that the dot product of that unit tensor times any vector is the vector. Okay? That is what we are doing. That's what we call this tensor one. Okay? Well, other properties of second order operations, the distributed properties that I have said. If we have a one a first order tensor, that product, second order tensor, is always equal second order tensor, dot product, first order tensor. What are the conditions? What is the conditions for this holding true? That's up to you. Some other operations that we can do in second order tensor. Transposition. So imagine that you have a second order tensor. This is the matrix of components. You know that the matrix of components is just a matrix that indicates the components of the second order tensor. Okay? So we define the transpose tensor, and we indicate that with this T as a superindex, that means A transposed, as that tensor that has whose matrix of components is that matrix transposed. What do you mean by transposed? That we just move the elements symmetrically or mirroring with respect to the principal diagonal. So for to transpose this matrix, we just move that one to that one here. So it's A to one. And that one to that place here. So that's A on two. That one, A32, we move to that place here. The symmetric placement with respect to the di principal diagonal and so on. So this is the transposed of this matrix. So the tensor that has this matrix as components is the transposed tensor of the original one. Understood? Some properties of transposition, well, they are here. The transpose of the transpose is the original one, of course. If I take that matrix, transpose the matrix and go to that one, and now transpose that one, we recover the original matrix. So the corresponding tensor is the same. Okay? So for instance, that's something that we use sometimes. If I have a dot product of two second order tensors and we transpose the results, the result, it can be proven that it's equal to take the first one transposed, dot product, the second one transposed. So we can move this T, this transposed, inside, but inverting the order of inside the parentheses. Okay? 
it can be also proven that in case of and here is a second order tensor because it's the the open product or the tensor product of two vectors. If I this is a second order tensor, I can transpose it and it's trivial, you can also prove it, that that is a second order tensor which is the open product of the second times the first. Okay, very easy to prove. This also is a rule. Another another concept, the trace. The trace of a second order tensor. Is that concept familiar to you? Have you always al uh, ever been told about the trace of a matrix? You remember? Is the trace of a matrix is the sum of the main principal diagonal members of the matrix. So this, which is in a scalar, which is A11, A22, A33, that's the trace of this matrix, that would be also extended to the trace of the tensor represented by this matrix. Okay? So the trace of the tensor is the trace of the components matrix and, by the way, it can be represented according to Einstein notation by AII because AII, I is repeated index, that means sum in terms of I, so it's A11 plus A22 plus A33. Okay? That's the trace. It, you can also prove that the trace of A times B, which is the trace of a matrix whose component IJ is AB, AIBJ, by the way, to obtain the trace of this matrix, I have to place here, as it's shown here, AII. So that is AIBI. And by the way, AIBI is what corresponds, as we defined before, as the, o in, as the dot product of vector A times vector B. So the trace of the tensor product of vector A, open product, vector B is just a scalar which is the vector A dot product vector B. Some other products of course, some other properties which are here for instance. The trace of A transposed is equal to the trace of A. Why? Because transposition doesn't affect to the main diagonal. So that's something. For instance also um, if I multiply the matrix times a scalar, then what I have is just all terms of the matrix are multiplied by the scalar. So the trace is just a alpha A11 plus alpha A22 plus alpha A33. So the trace is alpha, the trace of the original matrix, etc. So there are properties that are going to be used. Look, so for two, for uh, second order uh, tensors, we have defined the dot product, right? And the trace operation. Now we are going to define another operation, which is the double index contraction or double dot product. And we'll indicate it by that. Two dots in vertical placed vertically in between the two vectors. That's what. Okay, imagine that I have a second order tensor A and a second order tensor B. I want to do that, that double dot product. Double dot, look, if that before meant contraction of one index, double dot, or repetition of one index, double dot would imply what now? What is the logical assumption? Repetition of two indices. So. To do that operation, I take the component ij of the first vector and then the component of the second vector. What components? Since there is double dot, it means that the first component of A is repeated in B. So IA, BA. And the second component of A is also the same component of B. B, A, I, J, B, I, J. Look, how many talking indices are here, how many? No one. So the result has to be what? On a scalar. There is no index passing from this side to that side because all them are repeated. So the result is in a scalar. So the double index contraction or double dot product of two second order tensors are 
a the scalar, which is the result of multiplying every component AJ by the corresponding in A, by the corresponding component in B, and summing them up. For instance, in that case, let me see if I can, can move back, yes. If I want to multiply, imagine that this is A and this is B, the result is multiplying that component times the B component 1, 1, plus, plus, the component A, 1, 2, plus the component B, 1, 2, component I, A, 1, 3, times the component, the, the corresponding component, so box by box in every, in every matrix, we just multiply the, the element or the number in one box times the element in the same box in the second matrix, and we sum the results. That is what the equivalence of the double dot product. Of course, this is returning one number, which is a scalar. Okay? Okay. That is for the case in which the two tensors have the same order. What happens, for instance, if now we have a tensor of third order, A, times a tensor of second order, B. Well, the concept is the same. Double dot means contraction, repetition of indices. So what indices? Well, look, I place here one component, generic component of A, I, J, K. And now I have to place here some components of B. Which one? Look, double index means that I have to repeat the closer components in every case. So J, which is the second, is repeated with that, and K, which is the last, is repeated with that. That implies, of course, a double symmetry in terms of J and in terms of K. But I remains a talking in this. So that the result depends on what is I. So the result is something that has an index, which is I, something that has only one index. What is something that is one index? It's a first order tensor, that is a vector. So look, multiplying by double dot product, a second order product, a third order product times a second order product returns a vector, a second, a first order. Okay, the double contraction reduces the order of the first tensor two times, two orders, from three to one. Here, the double contraction reduces from two to zero, scalar, etc. Understand? Okay. Uh, imagine now that A is a fourth order tensor. We can do that. So you can anticipate the double dot product of a fourth order tensor times a second order tensor will return what tensor? What is the order of the returning tensor? Second, because I just take two indices from the order of the first one. By the way, is that way? I take a generic component of A, IJKL. Then the corresponding component of B, the okay, K here, K is repeated, K and L are repeated, because are the closer components, the ones that I would find if I put two indices here, are KL, KL. These ones are repeated. What remain unrepeated? So Tolkien indices, IAJ. So the result, these IJ indices move to the other side, remain to the result. So the result is a second order indices. Okay? So that can be extended to any case. Okay, let's go. Some properties. Well, that can be proven. Uh, look, there is a variation of that. Look, there is, when we talk about double index contraction, we can talk about vertical contraction, as we see before, double vertical contraction or horizontal contraction. What is the difference of having horizontal double dot <coughs> or vertical double dot as we had before? The difference is the order of the indices. When I have an horizontal double dot, I have, of course, I place the first component I and J, and here, if it was a vertical contraction, I put A J. Okay? So now I put the other way, J I. That's not the same result in general. But this, 
So the constant is the same, but the order of repetition is the opposite than before. Also here, that here the repetition is JK. Now, since it's horizontal double contraction, I put KJ. Of course, the result is also a first order tensor, a vector, but the components are different than if I take the vertical double dot, and so on. So that's, that's not very common, but sometimes, maybe a couple of times, we'll see something of that. More operations of that. Look, it's important, eh? The double contraction in general, A double contraction vertical B, and A double horizontal contraction times B, are not the same, excepting, and that can be proven, any of the, some of them, some of them are symmetric. What is a symmetric tensor, by the way? I didn't mention that. You can imagine what is a symmetric tensor. What is? What is a symmetric tensor? You know what is a symmetric mat matrix? Is the one that has exhibits symmetry with respect to the diagonal principle, to the principal diagonal. So a symmetric tensor would be that whose, whose matrix of components is symmetric. Okay? So if one tensor is symmetric, so the components of A or the components of B display a symmetric matrix, then it can be proven, and that's something that you can do just to exercise yourself, hmm? then that's something that they are equal. Otherwise, these are unequal. That's some examples that you can put. Okay? Let me finish with something, operations that are done in second order tensors. For instance, a second order tensor it's represented by a second order matrix of components and we know that we can take the determinant of a second order of a matrix. You know how to take a determinant. So we call the determinant of the tensor the determinant of the matrix of components of the tensor. And by the way, you don't need to prove that. It's rather complicated. It can be proven that this tensor can be expressed using matrix notation in this complex formula, complex but compact formula, in terms of the levi civita or permutation tensor and different components of A. So that's this expression. Look, A epsilon i j k times A one i times A two j times A three k. Okay, that is what is the determinant. Well, these operations are here, some properties, the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants, the determinant of the transposed is the determinant of the original. When I multiply the matrix or the tensor times the scalar, the determinant comes multiplied by that, co that coefficient to the power of three, etc. Another concept, the inverse of a matrix. Well, you, you know what is the inverse of the matrix, no? The inverse of a given matrix is another matrix that multiplied, in terms of matrix product, returns the 1, 1, 1, the identity matrix. So we extend that to the case of tensors. So the inverse of a, of a tensor A, second order tensor, is another second order tensor, A minus 1, such that the dot product of both is equal to 1. Or also this one. Okay? In that case, the, uh, this, this, the inverse fulfills this property. Okay? Look, here, that's the expression. That is the expression in terms of tensor. Okay? A times A minus 1 is equal to 1. We can express that also in components. How would I say that in components? Look, to express that, I will have to take one component of A, IAK, then one component of A minus 1, but since there is a dot product here, K is repeating here. So it's I A K times I A minus 1 K J. Look, the, 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 the talking indices are I J. So finally, here is I J. What is the component I J of the unique tensor? We said that, is the delta Kronecker. So that expression, which is done in terms of tensor, physical tensor, is what we call the intrinsic or the compact, the compact equation. So that's something that tells something, tells us something, in terms of tensors. 
So one tensor times its inverse is equal to the tensor identity. And these tell us the same, but in terms of components. Aik times Akj to the minus 1 is equal to delta Aj for Ij to k, Ijk equal 1 to 3. Okay? This is the same of this, but from now on we will call that, and we'll see that many times, the initial expression of the equation. That's an equation or the quality. And that is the same, but in terms of indices. They are the same. You can pass from one to the other immediately. If we see that, we can just write this, but if we write this, we realize that this is equivalent to that one. That is two different options that you will have to express equations or properties or some physics in terms of tensor magnitudes. We'll see that in the future.